So I'm just looking at how incredibly fit you are. Thank I'm just you. Have a fangirl moment. Hey, I mean, all right. It's nice. I like it. All right, quick thing. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna break the internet. Yeah, uh, you could. <laughs> how? I, I, what's really interesting is you really do pursue um, challenges. I am so lucky to have this opportunity. The show gave me every opportunity that I have now. And I almost feel like because of all the friends that I came up with, if they were given this opportunity, they'd want to push the limits the same way I am. I think Sundance, even before I was an actor, I always looked up to this place as something that was on the cutting edge of storytelling and filmmakers and storytellers. And so you come back here and you actually have to you know, be a part of their world rather than the idea of like, oh, you're on a TV show, so you're you know, uh, almost, you're, you're bigger than the festival itself. No, the festival's always the biggest thing, and I always find that so exciting. You're, you're here to participate. You're not here to be some shining star. All right, so you grew up, you're Boston boy, essentially, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Were there any directors or any movies or genres that you were obsessed with uh, growing up or coming through? You know what's funny is I think I was a, a very uh, middle-of-the-road consumer of movies as a kid. And then when I went to college, I went to Brown University, and I remember as great as the education was, mm -hmm. outside of the classroom was my biggest education. That's where I got to meet all these friends who, I hadn't seen any of the 70s movies, I hadn't seen any foreign films, I hadn't mm -hmm. really known independent film until I got to Brown. As far as directing, I was never an actor who thought directing was a foregone conclusion. I wasn't one of those guys who said, I'm gonna act and then I'll just direct. Because I have the highest respect for all directors. And so instead of being the type of director who said, you know, I'll, I'll direct a movie when I'm ready to make my masterpiece, I actually sort of subscribe to the uh, school of just jumping in the water and seeing if you can swim and, and learning. So I totally admit that I'm in the learning curve of directing. But that said, I will, I will say I don't know if I can have as good an experience as I had on the haulers. I mean, to get a cast like that together, um, people ask me, what's it like directing myself? And I actually never even thought about it because my main concern was making sure that these people who had traveled down to Jackson, Mississippi, taken two flights, mm -hmm. staying in a you know small hotel and getting paid nothing, they came here for me and so I had to uh, be responsible for um, that level of talent being with me. I just have to ask you, Margot Martindale, what is she like? How, what it, I mean, she's one of my favorite character actresses ever. Uh, brilliant in everything she does. Mm -hmm. What is it like working with someone like that. This is crazy, but she was she and I did my first job ever together. I was an extra, featured extra on a Marshalls commercial. And Margot Martindale was in that commercial. And we've known each other ever since then. Um, and she had this quote, which I'll never forget. She was very sweet. She said, I'm not a betting woman, but if I had all the, any money I had, I'd, I'd bet it on you. And then she said that the day we met. So when I called her and I said, would you ever be in this movie I'm directing? She said, yes. Yes, I will. And it was just, it was the greatest experience all the way through. I mean, she's, she's family. She's no longer an actress that I worked with. She's family. Oh, that's excellent. I love hearing that. I didn't even know yes. that. I just stumbled yeah. into that. Just nice little plug for Marshalls. And yeah. <laughs>